Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us today for our eSports Spring uh, 2021 preseason uh, webinar. My name is John Skies, and I'm the director of media for TAPS. We're going to get started in just a few minutes. Uh, but first, uh, we've got a couple of housekeeping items that I want to go over. So first things first, this webinar is being recorded. You're going to receive an email with a link to that recording uh, as soon as it's ready. It should be later this afternoon. Second, if you have any questions while we go through the presentation, please use the questions feature in the GoToWebinar interface. In that little um, GoToWebinar panel that's on your screen, if you look on the side, there's a drop down that says questions. Uh, you can just type those in there. We're going to see those and we'll try to get to them uh, as they come up. Uh, if we don't get to yours right away, don't worry. There's a kind of a brief Q&A period at the end. Um, but if your question is uh, a little too specific to uh, answer appropriately in this venue, send us an email uh, after the after the webinar, info at taps.biz, or call us at the office. So I'm joined today by Steve Prudhomme, TAPS Associate Director, Bina Williams, TAPS Director of Fine Arts, uh, and Will Dixon is in here uh, helping us out on the technical side today, uh, and James Kay from Play Versus. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to Vina, and I'm going to make James a presenter so he can show us his screen. Uh, and Vina, it's off to you. Thanks, John. Thank you for joining us today. Um, as we get started, um, I'd like to talk about uh, TAPS registration real quick. Uh, in, with TAPS, we use Rank 1 as our database for coach compliance and student eligibility. And so all coaches need to be compliant in Rank 1. If you don't have a Rank 1 account, please contact your athletic director or fine arts director and admin on campus that can help you get set up in rank one as the program director. <clears throat> we use that as our main lines of communication. And so in order to get the emails, we need to make sure that you are set up there. Uh, there's a short compliance part of your profile that you'll have to complete. And then this is also where the students will be listed for uh, your team rosters and where they'll be eligible. So if you need help with that, just contact the TAPS office for assistance and we can get you started with that. <clears throat> Before we start um, today's webinar, I just want to remind you that we have some, uh, we've done previous webinars last semester. We had one on general information, how to start your program, and building your team. And you can find those archives available on our YouTube channel uh, with Tax Biz. I'd like to welcome James. James is going to talk about our spring season uh, this semester and give us an overview of what we have uh, kicking off this month. Of course. Hey, everybody. My name is James Kay. I work with Play Versus. Uh, I've been doing this for quite a while. <laughs> um, so effectively, I just want to give, uh, I guess I'll give a little bit of an overview of myself, and then we'll go into esports, and then we'll kind of go into what the season's going to look like, what all the games are, what opportunities are for students, uh, as well as the staff, and uh, kind of everything in between. <clears throat> so I'm James. I've been doing uh, working in the high school esports world for almost eight years now, uh, which uh, kind of coming from the collegiate esports world where I used to work for the NCAA as kind of their esports uh, 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 like advisor. Um, so done a, t a ton of work in kind of, you know, building uh, programs across like high schools, colleges and everywhere in between. So if you ever have any questions about how to set up a program or how to work with esports or anything like that, feel free to reach out to me. My contact information will be on the last slide here. Um, I work at a company called Play Versus. We partner with all the state organizations uh, to effectively, you know, work with esports to make it into a sanctioned sport or activity after school. Um, so TAPS being one of those partners and uh, kind of the, uh, uh, you know, the really great opportunity for like Texas schools to get involved with. So when I see esports, uh, I don't know if everybody knows what that means. So let's kind of get into that first. So esports effectively, it stands for electronic sports, uh, which, you know, it's all about teamwork, communication, strategic thinking, leadership, anything that you would have in traditional sports kind of truthfully stands like the physical activity component. Uh, that allows for a lot of uh, ability for students to get involved that might not have other been, otherwise been able to get involved. Students that typically don't get involved in actual sports or activities. Uh, uh, it's honestly a really, really cool opportunity. And, and on top of that, more than likely your students are already doing this right now. So why not kind of meet them where they are and, and turn this into something kind of bigger than, uh, than it was. So, you know, esports is actually pretty huge. I don't know if, uh, if uh, anybody has seen uh, the ESPN broadcast or anything like that, but uh, 
you know, it's been all over TV, all over, especially during the pandemic. Uh, uh, and, you know, things are really starting to uh, uh, collectively continue to grow. Um, if you look in terms of like uh, career opportunities for students, uh, there's actually more jobs uh, and in the uh, the games industry than there are in Hollywood and uh, the music industry combined. So, you know, when we're thinking of, you know, what opportunities are there for students, it's really not just, uh, you know, playing video games, it can be a lot, a lot more. So kind of going on to uh, the next slide here, um, right into that. So, you know, students are able to learn life skills, uh, like teamwork, conceptual thinking, resiliency, sportsmanship. I mean, again, you know, just to reiterate, this really is very similar or if not identical to what you what happens in traditional sports, just kind of on a different playing field. Um, kind of further on that too, you know, there's these opportunities for students to uh, uh, get scholarships and, and things like that too. Um, so there's 200 to 300 universities that offer scholarships around esports. Uh, so once the students graduate from high school, you know, going to a school like uh, UT Dallas, getting a scholarship for it, and uh, you know, being a uh, you know a, effectively a D1 athlete, right? Uh, so kind of getting into like, you know, how does esports work, especially in the high school side? Um, you know, we built out a, uh, like a platform that does esports or, or makes it really simple and easy. A lot of the problems that we had in the past were that trying to get everybody together to play uh, was really tough. Uh, it wasn't just, you know, press a few buttons and you get into a game. It was, you know, having to reach out to these people, do this thing, move over there, like, it was actually weirdly enough a lot to to do. Uh, so you know we've gone through when we've gotten rid of a lot of those problems and then put on a lot of uh, really cool improvements. So uh, kind of looking into here, uh, you know we set up all the schedules so that you don't have to do that week to week. Uh, you know we have uh, ways that you can kind of you know tell who's on your roster, who's not. Uh, you know for like compliance reasons and things like that. Uh, Vina mentioned rank one as well, so we're kind of using those two in tandem. Um, being able to sit down and, and do like scouting and understand who you're actually playing against, um, you know, all basically everything that you would see again in, in traditional sports. So kind of you know furthering that that uh, that connection between the two and you know really showing that this is something that's you know there for the students to show them that this is you know this is something real, right? Um, so kind of getting into what this looks like from tap side. So. What we do is we put together a competition that typically uh, happens twice a year, once in the fall and once in the spring. And the one in the fall will typically start around October and go until the end of the, uh, the calendar year. The one in the spring, the one that's coming up in the next month, month and a half here, uh, will actually be starting around February 15th, around Valentine's Day. We're gonna have a preseason, so that's gonna be two weeks where students are gonna get together online, you know, play out some matches, see if this works, uh, and, you know, just try it out. Uh, and then we'll go into an eight week long regular season where every single week students are going to be playing, uh, you know, weekly matches against some opposing team, uh, you know, getting wins, losses, and, and us calculating kind of their standing. Uh, once the regular season ends, then we're going to have a playoffs um, where, you know, we'll start eliminating teams one by one by one and then we'll crown a TAPS champion. Um, and kind of on like thinking about this on like, what does this look like each day or each match day? Um, you know, 4.30 PM is when the matches are gonna happen. The students are effectively, you know, uh, school ends, either they will, you know, run down to the computer lab with their coach uh, and, and kind of, you know, sit down, go to the Play Versus website, who, see who they're gonna play against, press a few buttons, you know, and, and bang, they're, they're in the game ready to play. Or, you know, depending on kind of your status at your school, maybe some of those students are going to be going home and kind of doing it from there, or uh, maybe the entire team is going to be doing it from home uh, and with their coach overseeing them through something like Zoom or uh, Discord or, or, you know, any other kind of online platform. Uh, but effectively, it's the same thing. You know, the students are going to be kind of in charge of a lot of this uh, in terms of you know, making sure that they're around and available. Uh, the coach is gonna be there to kind of ensure that things don't break, to be able to reach out to opposing coaches, to instill those leadership qualities, to, you know, help them when they're, uh, you know, when they're struggling. Um, and yeah, 
it's it's pretty easy. So these matches, you know, again, they're starting around 4:30. Uh, there's about a 30 minute grace period there, so you know they can start anywhere from 4:30 to 5 p.m. Um, there will be, I, I I typically say, you know, budget about an hour and a half to two hours for each one of these matches, and uh, you shouldn't have too much of a problem, and you'll probably even get out early. Uh, the specific days will uh, be coming up on another slide here, but we split each game into a different day so that you can kind of reuse the same equipment. So kind of going into that, uh, looking into these game titles, um, if, if you're not super familiar with, with esports and games, you, you might not have an idea too much of what these are, but we've chosen the games that are like the most popular games uh, and games that are really, they really fit well within a school environment. Uh, so we don't you know, have any like realistic first person shooters or anything like that that we offer. We try to be really, um, uh, you know, sensitive about it. So the first game that we have is called League of Legends. Uh, that is for uh, teams of five. I kind of like to say it's our basketball. So each one of the students in the game, there's five different roles and each student will kind of fit into one of those roles. Uh, it's a, a really top down game. And uh, yeah, honestly, it's it's effectively our basketball um rocket league is is 100 our soccer uh so it's teams of three and you play as a uh as a car and you're effectively are are, are you know shooting this ball or running into this ball to get it to uh, go into the net so super simple to understand pretty easy to run only has three players um you know pretty great game uh, the next game is a game called smite uh, it is very similar to League of Legends, except it is on more of a like a 3D kind of playing field. So the exact same thing, you know, three roles, uh, three different or five roles, uh, you know, different ways to play. Um, yeah. So uh, from there, we have two new game titles, and these are are plainly obvious. So this is you know Madden. Uh, it's it's actually football, so it's simulation football, and then we've got FIFA, which is uh, simulation soccer. Those are all in groups of three. The only difference between these are are these are and the other games are, you know, these are you're required to have a like a PlayStation to play them. Um, so uh, we also have uh, two other games that uh, that we're offering, uh, which are uh, a game called Fortnite and Overwatch. Uh, those two are part of what we're calling our youth league. So they're not TAP state championship titles. Uh, they're, you know, think of your local youth league. So, you know, if you're going, uh, uh, you can have students from uh, different schools kind of play together. Um, it's not super formal, but, you know, we'll still have a, 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 a league for it. Um, there'll still be, you know, scholarships and things like that available. Uh, and uh, yeah, still a pretty fun and neat opportunity for the students. Um, so going into those individual days, like I mentioned, uh, this does say 4 p.m. That's that's incorrect. Uh, uh, Texas is the one state in the nation that is actually going to be on 4:30 p.m. because I know that y'all get out a little bit later uh, uh, than most other states. So uh, League of Legends and FIFA are both going to be on Tuesdays. So if you're fielding a team for one of those games. You'd want to make sure that that you and and your students are around at 4:30 p.m. to be able to play those out. Uh, Smite is on Wednesdays, uh, as with the two youth league titles uh, with Overwatch and, and Fortnite. Um, Thursdays is Rocket League and Madden. So one other thing that we kind of just launched very recently uh, is this idea of like a volunteer coach program. So think that you're, you know, an athletic director or a coach of a program that, you know, you really want to get this going, but you don't like, you, you might have somebody that's kind of willing to oversee the students, but they don't really have an understanding of what these games are. Or they don't feel comfortable or they, they just need a little bit of help. Uh, so we've gone through, we've uh, identified, um, uh, individuals that want to help build up programs that are, uh, you know, okay with doing this for free and kind of working with schools. Uh, so we put them through, you know, like background checks. Uh, we've done some training with them to, you know, help them understand, you know, esports as well as the the website uh, and kind of how that works. Uh, they're all at least a certain rank in the game, um, and you can kind of, you know, uh, get paired with an adult volunteer to, you know, help organize your program. They're still going to have to go through the uh, the same steps that you would have to go through to be a TAPS coach. Um, so all of the compliance related stuff uh, that, you know, uh, uh, you'd have to go through, you know, for that process. But, you know, 
there's at least you know this as an uh, as another opportunity for you uh, and your school to kind of you know fuel that program if it's something that you really want to do. Um, so from there, um, honestly, super simple. Uh, kind of the next steps, uh, you know, we have our website. So go into the Play Versus website, playvs.com. There will be a little button on there that says something to the effect of. Uh, you know, click here to sign up or click here to register. You'll go in there, um, you know, you'll say, you know, who you are uh, as well as, you know, which school you're from. We'll put you through a little check system to make sure that, uh, you know, you're a, you're actually a teacher or administrator at the school. Just, you know, the same kind of check that you would get when you're signing up for something with a teacher discount. Um, once you sign up, uh, you'll have access to the website. You'll be able to see if there's any students that have signed up. Uh, uh, you'll be able to kind of place those students onto teams, be able to get them ready uh, and, and kind of, you know, build up from there. Um, so I'll go ahead and, and just show you a little bit of what that website looks like. Uh, I guess, uh, uh, Vina and everybody, are, are, are you all still able to see my screen from here? Yes, looks good. Yes, sir. perfect. So this being the website here, so there is that sign up now button there. There's a bunch of other resources that are available on the website. If you scroll over the eSports 101 section, there's a little academy uh, there. You know, you can have uh, somebody, you know, go in, learn about eSports, go through some uh, lessons, get a little certificate at the very end. Uh, these lessons are actually uh, curated and, and created by uh, either uh, other coaches that that you know you might be playing against or even um some of the like professional like coaches of esports teams uh you know that are getting big money to go and uh you know field some of the best of the best so there's a lot of really cool opportunities there um you can go in as well and, and see things like uh you know we, we do have uh like cost and pricing associated with it that comes out to about 64 dollars per student uh for the season um that gets uh, access to everything there's also a few games that are free um being rocket league uh as as the big one uh as well as our youth league titles and then there's uh honestly if you just kind of search the website a little bit you know there's a bunch of different uh really cool op opportunities uh you know there's uh super coaches which are individuals within the state that are or within every state that are uh, around and available to be a resource to you. So if you scroll down here, we can see Texas and there's a, a bunch of people there. Uh, Ronnie Baskin actually being from a TAP school at British International School of Houston. So, you know, a pretty cool opportunity to reach out to him and kind of learn how he's built his program. Uh, I chat with him all the time. Uh, from there, um, another really cool opportunity is our Game Changers program. So for any school that fields an all girls team, uh, we actually go and uh, do a lot of discounting and, um, you know, uh, give uh, mentorship opportunities and things like that. Uh, I think for that, it, it comes out to like 15% off of the uh, program. If you're an all-girls school, uh, we we basically bring down the price almost entirely. <laughs> um, and then from there, uh, there is an opportunity to, um, you know, work with... Uh, uh, some of our uh, uh, mentors, ambassadors. Uh, so everybody from, uh, you know, we've got Play Versus staff members, but we also have people that are professional coaches or uh, like content directors and, you know, player development at all of these like major esports teams, which is a really cool opportunity and something that, uh, you know, we're really, really excited to kind of push through. Um, so yeah, from my side, that's really about it. Um, and uh, yeah, if, if definitely if there's any questions, uh, feel free to reach out and, you know, always happy to uh, to uh, kind of chat and, you know, learn more about your program and, and help you build it. Thanks, James. We do have some questions that have come about, um, if you can take a look at those. Um, one of the questions um you mentioned the season is 64 dollars but the site reads that 64 is the annual pass can you talk a little bit more about the pricing yeah so the price comes out to 64 dollars per per student per season uh the annual kind of refers to like a little like uh package of like 16 passes or eight passes that we have um so you know if you buy if you buy the 16 it's typically enough for for you know having a a team in both seasons uh so 
that's where the the annual comes from. Uh, most of the schools that we work with will do something like that. But it does come out to $64 per season. We do have some uh, discounts available. One, as I mentioned, for you know any school that builds an all-girls team and fields that. Uh, the other are for schools that uh, you know have financial need or, or their students have financial need. Uh, reaching out to me directly, I'm able to kind of uh, you know work with you on a on a one-to-one -one basis to make sure that uh, you know everybody is is able to play uh, and that you know budget isn't really the biggest concern. Um, other thing that I want to stress on budget is, you know, you're also likely going to be able to make use of uh, the equipment that you already have on campus, which is great. Uh, a lot of these games will run on a wide variety of machines. I think League of Legends is uh, uh, kind of a good example of that, where it will literally run on anything. I have some schools that are playing on, you know, 10, 11 year old computers, uh, and they're some of our top teams, uh, which has been really, really, really cool to see. Um, so a lot of opportunities there. And the students, if you're playing from home, honestly, a lot of the students are going to have, have this already, too. <laughs> OK. It uh, looks like uh, another question. A large majority of the students are participating in extracurricular activities that occur directly after school. Is there another time slot later in the day for students who have another time commitment that still wish to participate? Uh, can you talk about the? the game time versus practice time? Yeah, so the matches themselves do happen at 4.30 uh, for the TAPS League. We have had some success uh, with, with schools kind of asking for a, a, a different time, but it's really entirely up to the opposing team and you'll have to be really communicative uh, you know, in advance and you know, it's, it's, it's up to them. <laughs> um, I, I know that the TAPS schools have been pretty nice and really respectful about that. Uh, I would say, you know, going in and making sure that, you know, the, the students that are are committed to this are, are free at some of those times is probably pretty good. Um, the other side is is what Vina said, uh, you know, we do, you know, you're in, in actually playing itself, uh, playing in the league at 430 is, you know, one thing, but, you know, practicing, uh, kind of playing, uh, you know, at, at other times is available as well. So you can go into the Play Versus website, you can press a few buttons on the, uh, on the uh, uh, practice section, and you can actually get a match against you know a team from anywhere really. Uh, so you can say that hey, I'm free at 6 p.m. on Tuesday or this upcoming Tuesday. Is anybody else free? And uh, you know you can play against not just TAP schools or Texas schools, but kind of anybody from throughout the nation. Uh, you know we we work with schools in Hawaii, Maine, Alaska, uh, everywhere in between. Um, so a lot of really cool opportunities there for uh, digital citizenship and otherwise uh, to kind of, you know, do that normalization of, of, of eSports. So how many teams can you actually have for, um, for each of the games? Um, and some of them, you know, with the championship, we are asking uh, one team to go on to those playoffs. But yep. uh, is there a limit to how many teams they could actually have playing Rocket League or um, League of Legends? Yeah, so in terms of the TAPS League itself, what we do is think of that as your varsity league. So with that, um, you know, you'll be able to field a team in there, kind of compete for that TAPS championship and, uh, you know, kind of go for that that overall, you know, victory, right? Uh, if you do, you can have as many teams as, as you can uh, reasonably field. Uh, you know, having, you know, 70 kids and just yourself might be a little difficult, uh, but, you know, provided that you have uh, uh, the mental fortitude as well as the computers to be able to oversee them uh, and, and have them, you know, play on them, um, you know, you're able to field as many teams as possible. Uh, most of the other teams, you know, after your varsity team will go into more of a regional league. Uh, so you'll play against other teams throughout Texas, uh, you know, a lot of them being like UIL schools and things like that. But, um, you know, they'll still have that chance to kind of go, you know, further and, and uh, you know, compete in, in again, think of it kind of like the JV League at that point. And how hard is it to sub a team member, say you have a team and then you have these other teams, how hard is it to sub a player uh, for any particular week match? Super easy. Uh, just going to the Play Versus website, there'll be a little swap button or a little like sub button. Um, and you can kind of move out those players. I will say that, you know, once a student has participated in the varsity league, uh, so the TAPS league itself, uh, you know, we try to keep them within that team and that's to prevent, you know, you from uh, 
you know, sending your best players down to the, to the JV league and, and, uh, you know, having them, you know, play whenever maybe you feel like you might have an easy match in, in your varsity league. Um, so again, at, at the end of it, super easy. Just, you know, make sure if you're, if you're subbing students up that, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're staying in that varsity side. Okay. And as far as TAPS is concerned, guys, when, um, when you create your rosters in rank one, you, you'll just have like a League of Legends roster and just any kids that would potentially be playing on those teams do need to be eligible um, in rank one. Um, TAPS does not require physicals for esports, um, but we do require a medical history and uh, parents to fill out that profile. So that medical history is filled out by the parents. It's, it does not require a doctor form or anything like that. Um, they also have to fill out a signature page and complete that student's profile. So um, there are a few things in rank one to make them completely eligible. And if you have uh, difficulties with making sure one of them show up as uh, green as eligible, uh, then just let us know and we can help you troubleshoot uh, making sure that they are completely eligible in the system. Yeah, and on the note of compliance too, something that we do have on our side is, uh, you know, students have to be, so yeah, students have to be at least the age of 13 to be able to participate. Uh, from our side, that that does typically allow if you have that, you know, a, a, a joint campus for your kind of under, uh, uh, your more like middle school or your underclassmen to, you know, be able to participate without too much of an issue. Uh, uh, it, it really is going to depend on your school as well as uh, making sure that you're kind of complying with uh, with the TAPS regulations. Uh, and so just to follow up, another question came in about the medical history. Does that follow, does that um, carry over from athletics? So your eligible, your student eligibility, once they're eligible in TAPS for any sport or fine art, um, it will also work for um, esports. or uh, the only difference is that some of the athletics and some of the fine arts require a physical, a doctor's physical, um, but uh, those aren't required for all of the fine arts, so even esports. And so, uh, if if they are already showing as eligible for athletics, then there's nothing more to do than other than to put them on the roster. Uh, so just be sure when you log in and you create your roster, if they're showing as red, uh, just you'll you'll be able to see on the right side any of the columns that have an N next to it, a no or a dash mark that says that that, that particular piece of information is missing. Then that's what's missing for that one kid. Um, so one of the uh, another question we have um, our school's not very far technology uh, technology I can't speak today uh, speaking <laughs> are the are there programs or sponsorship deals through play versus that would be able to help purchase gear or has gear been donated um, by play versus or taps partners um, do you have any information on maybe grants or things that can help schools get started uh, technology wise yeah, so I think it's a kind of a three-part question in my mind. Uh, so first is uh, around like grants and things like that. Uh, you know, we like the grants that we offer are more or less, um, you know, uh, offsetting costs of like participation dues and things like that. Um, we didn't want to go through and, and create like a, a direct partnership with uh, um, any like manufacturer or anything like that, because we want to make sure that the schools are able to kind of make that relationship uh, themselves kind of on a personal uh, sponsorship basis. Um, you know, if, if, if the league itself was with, uh, I don't know, HP uh, and, you know, Dell is right around the corner from y'all, uh, there might be a little bit of a conflict there. And we wanted to make sure that there's, that there's not. Um, so speaking to uh, like grants that you can find, what I say is, uh, typically go you know if if you're able to partner you know if you're from the athletics department and if you're able to partner with another department at your school such as CTE or somebody that wants to do uh like game design or 3D modeling or any of these other uh you know uh courses that might require uh you know better computers uh, reaching out to them uh working with them on on building out a, a you know a, a effectively a grant um, going to more local organizations is typically your best bet. Uh, as kind of somebody that's done grant writing for a long time, uh, local orgs are always easier to get than, you know, trying to find something, uh, you know, more, or local grants are easier to find than trying to find something national. Um, once you're able to kind of do that, you know, building out a grant that focuses on STEM or STEAM engagement uh, is probably your best bet too. 
you know, you can write that grant as, you know, we want to build this 3D modeling uh, uh, program, blah, 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 whatever it is. Um, and then, you know, have some section at, you know, probably at the end, really, about esports that you want to use these computers on top of uh, what you're going to do in class, you know, after school, increase the effective use time by 20, 30, 40 percent, uh, and, you know, try to help instill those values uh, through this extracurricular. Um, so when those grant writing institutions or, you know, grant giving institutions kind of, you know, read through that, you know, it'll be another boring 3D modeling grant, and then they'll see esports, and it's actually something that, uh, you know, is is unique, interesting, and, you know, might catch their eye. Uh, so it fits a lot of those requirements for STEM and STEAM outreach. Uh, and yeah, I, I think that's great. Uh, other things that you can kind of do with it if, you know, you want to get other departments involved is I've seen a lot of uh, schools build up, uh, you know, partner with a journalism department or a video broadcasting to either, you know, work with a local newspaper, report scores, or uh, just broadcast out these matches, uh, you know, treat them like a normal sports broadcast, uh, have a commentator, you know, have the students go and, and uh, you know, uh, go from that side. Um, and that's been a pretty good way of getting uh, grant funding as well and kind of uh, honestly just having a really cool opportunity for students to grow. Um, and the last point is, uh, you know, I would reach out to somebody within your IT department to see who uh, your normal uh, like purchaser or, you know, who you normally purchase computers from. Typically, if you look on the computers that are within your computer labs or your, uh, you know, teacher computers, you'll see, you know, they're either Dell, HP or, you know, something in between. Um, the school will typically have deals with those uh, um like those those computer manufacturers and you're able to kind of get a better deal than you normally would if you were to just go to their website um i know that dell has been doing a lot to kind of uh grow esports uh you know they're they're down there in round rock uh so you know it's uh kind of the texas connection too there might be something there um it's really just kind of you know leaning a little bit on your your it uh, uh folks and uh you know trying to see what's out there thanks james we have a couple more questions. Um, so as far as registration, uh, the few questions that came in, as far as registration will play versus, it is uh, February 26th, the registration deadline in, for the spring thing. Now there is a preseason that begins a little bit earlier than that. And so if you want to be a part of the preseason, um, that, that starts sooner. But for the teams, it's February 26th. So in TAPS, in, for TAPS, uh, we do want you in rank one, your students do need to be eligible by that uh, by the time the season begins, uh, which is March 1st. As far as coaches are concerned, the sooner you get in the system, the sooner you're looped into the um, yep. mail that goes out. So we are communicating with the coaches now, but as of last week, there were only about half of you that had a program director for esports. And so we're still just sending it to your administration and hoping they're forwarding it to the teachers. So we just need to make sure the coaches are listed as a program director in rank one as soon as possible, and then continue working on the eligibility of the students um, before the season begins on March 1st. Um, with, with that, uh, another question came in about the medical history. So the physicals, you don't need. The medical history, you do need. And that is part of completing their eligibility. If they've already done that for any athletics or any other fine art that they've participated in, it does carry over. You have one student profile in, in rank one and that student profile, once they do it, it it's done. So um, if they have already participated in another TAPS event, then it should show up as eligible. Um, so just be sure if they are red, you look at see what they're missing. If it's green, then they're good to go. Um, so the last date to join the spring semester, James, can you just verify that for me? That registration date is the 26th of February? Yep. So the last day to register is going to be the 26th. Um, I, honestly, we typically do keep it open for another week, but the problem that you'll run into is, is, is you will lose the first week automatically by forfeit. Um, huge, huge problem and probably something that you don't want to do, uh, but reach out to me directly if you're having any issues hitting that 26th deadline. Um, and I'll kind of work with you from there. Um, the other side is is typically, you know, the sooner that you sign up and, and get a team situated in there, one, you're going to let TAPS know that you're actually, you know, going to participate, which is great. Uh, we can kind of get more resources to you and we, we can, uh, you know, get you ready to actually, you know, take home that state championship. 
Uh, two, I know my marketing team likes to do a little bit of stuff too. Uh, we had a bunch of like little giveaways and stuff like that that happened last year. I don't know if they'll happen this year, but uh, they really only happened for the schools that were, uh, you know, enrolled and had a team. Um, so there was like little raffles and stuff like that that happened, which is pretty cool. Um, but yeah, last date is the 26th. Uh, if you want to get on the preseason, though, that is the 15th. The preseason is effectively free games. So. And, and when we're talking Pretty about fun. the schedule with like Tuesday being a certain game on Tuesday, uh, you, they are expected to play a game every week. Is that correct? Once the season begins? That is correct. There are some weeks that, you know, maybe there's a there's a holiday or something going on um, and we might shift things around for those purposes. But effectively, you know, every Tuesday, if you're playing League of Legends and having a team, you know, you should be available and, and there for for 430. Right, so the games are on those scheduled 4.30 League of Legends Tuesday. That's when you will play the game. And then the kids can be practicing throughout the week, playing each other, playing other teams um, at yep. any time. And then, Anytime. Yeah, and then uh, another question, the difference between the state and the regional league. Can you explain that just a little bit more? Yep, state is your top state championship. So once you go into that, you got – you know, you're only playing against top schools. You're going for the top state championship. You're going to get the same trophy that you would for, for you know, for football, basketball, baseball. You know, it's, it's you know, that sanctioned official league. Your regional league is a little bit more for fun, but um, it is, again, it's, it's more of your JV league. So it's not just top schools, though. It's also going to be schools from all across Texas. So a, a bunch of public schools and everybody in between, too. So there's a lot... You know, there, there's a lot of, uh, uh, you know, opportunities there as well. Uh, each one of those leagues, uh, we're taking the scores, standings, and everything like that. And we're going to do things like, uh, you know, in the future, we want to crown uh, like an All-American uh, and, and things like that. We're, we're looking to tie like scholarships around to some of that too. So there's going to be a lot of, a lot of really big opportunities. Uh, so, you know, the more students that are playing and participating and, and doing well, uh, you know, the more opportunities for something really cool. Um, the other thing that I really want to mention, too, is when we do have the um, the playoffs and those state championships, uh, we do broadcast them, we do record them, and I typically, uh, you know, get out my collegiate esports Rolodex and, and kind of shoot off emails to the uh, to the coaches at, you know, colleges across the nation to, you know, go and scout and look at the students as they continue to play. So that's so they, there as well. Yeah. So when they register and say that we they have several teams in the regional league for um, for Rocket League, you know they've got more than one team. For the state league, they will register their varsity team, and that one team will play for our state championship. Um, in those weekly matches before that state championship, um, the weekly matches they can sub kids in and out, um, but then once the state tournament comes, how hard is it to sub a person? So they they should. Um, so by the end of the regular season, um, we're gonna you know you're able to take uh, your team as well as a few subs off to that playoffs. So you know there will be a room for uh, for some subs. Uh, you know you won't be able to take your whole say if you're a really big school your whole 50 man roster. <laughs> um, that's really that that entire thing is so that we can prevent gigantic schools from having a huge uh, advantage uh, for scouting reasons and things like that. And then um, it, it just to clarify, they, they had said one question was um, if they form one team for the state league, how many teams can they have for the regional league? And if they sub a player up from the regional league to the state league, can they take them off the state bar, the state roster and put them back to the regional? I'm not sure if that. Yeah, no, that makes perfect sense. Um, so they so they're able to field as many regional teams as they, you know, they have students for. Um, but, uh, you know, once they do sub a student into a state team like that, that student is a state player. Um, so state being kind of the, you know, the more varsity regional being the more like JV, you know, once you sub somebody into this into the into the state side, like, you know, they're they're a state player. Uh, that's, again, to prevent, you know, you from taking students and, you know, making sure that, you know, they're always going to play against the, uh, you know, the, the, the you know, uh, or they're, they're not going to play against, you know, the really more or less challenging teams. Uh, things that we can do from our side to at least help try to reduce, you know, cheating and, uh, you know, make sure that this is uh, fair and equitable for everybody. Thanks. 
And then one last question on the volunteer coaches. Um, is that an online volunteer coach thing or are you connecting them uh, regionally if they are in your area kind of thing? And how deep is the verification process with that? Yeah, so it's, a, it's, it's either or actually. We do have a lot of, um, of coaches that are like nearby some of the major like metroplexes. I uh, think of, you know, DFW, Austin, uh, Houston. Um, so, you know, there's a chance that we're able to, uh, you know, field somebody that is, you know, right around the corner from the school, which has been uh, really great to see last season. Um, otherwise, it is more of an online basis uh, to oversee. Uh, from our side, in terms of, you know, what's required for them to go through that process, uh, we do put them again through a, a background check and, and do some uh, like digging on our side. Uh, we put them through uh, a, a pretty um, like a, a different version of our like play versus academy to try to get them you know with as much information as possible about like how the games work. Uh, most of them are, are you know hardcore gamers uh, from the, themselves. They they understand the games. It's like how do you understand you know high school esports and what these leagues look like. So they know a lot about that. Uh, and then they're typically at, you know, at least a certain, you know, skill level in these games so that they're actually proficient enough to be able to, you know, better understand. Uh, a good example of, you know, who these people are have been, we have an esports uh, coach at a, a local school, uh, you know, in, well, this is not really local here, but, you know, we place them at a, at a, at a high school in Massachusetts, uh, you know, where they were, a, a, you know, a collegiate esports director at a, a school up in Massachusetts. Um, so, you know, we have people that are doing that. Uh, I have uh, people that are just, um, you know, they're they're just super excited about games. They want to get into the esports industry at some point, uh, and you know, you know, they they've gone through college. They're super excited about you know trying to make a difference, and you know, they have kind of connected with one of the schools. And I think that school, uh, uh, that other example was in Colorado, where I think they ended up getting like third place or something like that. Uh, and, uh, you know, they were a, a, a charter school for disadvantaged youth. Uh, so it was really cool to see. Um, so from our side, you know, we, we put them through that. We, we do uh, uh, tell them ahead of time that they may have to go through additional either background checks, fingerprinting, or anything like that within the school itself, uh, because we know that the school, you know, might want to go through that process. Um, and then they'll obviously have to go through the TAPS related compliance, uh, you know, uh, purposes of, you know, how to become a coach and how to formally be a coach at a school. Thanks, James. Um, I think that's the last of the questions. Um, I just wanted to verify as far as the state championships. I know that last semester we were only able to offer the state champion for League of Legends and Rocket League. We didn't have enough teams, uh, TAPS teams to field our own TAPS League for some of the other games. Is that similar this semester? Yep, yep. So uh, we do require that there's at least, uh, I want to say, 15 to 20 uh, uh, teams being f fielded within the uh, league itself to be able to have, uh, an ex you know, a, a TAPS-specific championship. Um, reason for that is almost entirely on the uh, standpoint of making sure that the games are fair and fun. <laughs> uh, a lot of these games, um, you know, if you start doing really well at the very beginning because it's kind of a mix, mix match and who you're playing against, uh, that game will snowball and become more and more, you know, one-sided. Uh, you know, think of an example where, you know, you're playing football and, you know, a uh, quarterback does a really, really good uh, good play. You know, get, uh, they do incredibly well. And then for some reason, you know, their arm grows twice as strong. Uh, that's kind of what happens in these games as you do really well. Uh, you get better abilities. You slightly, you're doing slightly better that match. Uh, you become stronger in the game for that match. Uh, so we try to make sure that in every way possible that we're making sure that these matches are, uh, you know, of even or, or similar skill level. We do that through some matchmaking algorithms and things like that, too. So we effectively are reclassifying your school every few games uh, to show who you're going to play against next so that you're not playing against a team that is going to completely, you know, one side and dominate yours. Um, with only a few teams in the league, we can't really do that. And the experience just isn't fun for anybody. Um, so the goal is to feel the really strong leak. <laughs> well, well, James, I appreciate you in answering all these questions uh, and, and the presentation today we think is uh, was very helpful. Um, and at this point, I'm gonna hand it off to John uh, to kind of wind down the, the webinar and give you some important information. John. Sure, folks. Um,
For more information, of course, you can always uh, uh, go to our website. That's taps.biz. We are also on Facebook, on Twitter. We have an eSports Twitter account. So if you've got us, if you're a school that's participating, if your team has an account, uh, if you want to follow us personally, that's twitter.com slash taps eSports or at taps eSports. Um, we retweet a lot of uh, resources from Play Versus and from um, uh, from other sources uh, as far as esports, so that's a good activity. Uh, and then we put as much as we can on our YouTube page, that's youtube.com slash tapsbiz. That's also going to be where you can find a recording of this webinar. I also want to plug our podcast. It's not on the screen right now, um, but uh, if you're into podcasts, we've got one called Taps Talk. And uh, last semester, we put out a deep dive into esports um, with play versus and with two TAPS coaches. And one of them was Ronnie Baskin, that super coach uh, that James mentioned. We have a good interview with him and how he, uh, what he sees the benefits of esports, uh, how he works that on his campus, how he got his program started. Uh, and we also interview a coach who knew nothing about video games when he started, nothing about these games when he started. Uh, and he uh, brought up his own League of Legends team. So that was, that was a fun conversation. Uh, and we even have uh, interviews with a couple of students, uh, Rocket, uh, Rocket League players from Lubbock. Um, so that's a good um, resource for you if you're interested. There's a copy of that on our YouTube page, youtube.com slash tapsbiz, or just search for us on any podcast app. Just look for Taps Talk, and the episode you want is episode seven, and it is all about uh, esports. Now, if you need to contact us, um, we've got our email addresses on the screen in just a second, info at taps.biz, uh, lane at playverses.com, or james at playverses.com. James is your best bet for your technical questions. Um, come to us with anything else. Uh, if we didn't get to your question today, um, again, please uh, please follow up, send us an email. Um, and with that, uh, thank you, James. Thank you, Vina. Thank you, Steve. Uh, and I think that will wrap it up for today. Hey, thank you, everybody, for coming out. If there's any questions at all, hitting myself up at, at james at playverse.com is great. Whenever I send you an email, too, there's going to be a phone number in the email signature. That's a personal cell phone. You can call, text, email, or anything. Uh, I'm always happy. I only pick up uh, uh, calls from people in Texas nowadays. So, you know, y'all have priority. Happy to, uh, you know, help out. And if there's anything I can do, just, you know, give me a ring. Fantastic. Thank you, James. Uh, and uh, thank you, everybody, for being here today. And you folks, please enjoy the rest of your day. <laughs>